What's up guys? So today I want to explain a little bit about how to see an image from the technical and so just a primer on that from the technical, which will help you solve problems or do things creatively that you want to do. I was asked about a shot similar to this um, from a student of mine, and I found my own shot that I want to use that was similar because it was in fact, you know, kind of an erotic shower scene that was low light, so it was high ISO. There was beads of water and, and shiny skin and wet hair, transparency on an outfit. Um, it was a lots of darks and lights. There was all kinds of situations. And he asked me, oh, how do I edit the skin? I want to have a polished commercial skin look. And I have noise, I have discoloration, I have beads of water. How do I go about the tried and true skin smoothing or whatever with all of this? Well, that led to a long conversation about how you perceive an image. And that's why I'm going to break it down for you here. If you look at the layers on the right, we have a couple of sort of, you know, um, decomposed, if you will, or, you know, kind of separated different things that I want to show you to talk about how we look at an image. Okay. So let me turn off most of these right now. And we're going to look just straight at the background, which is the shot itself. Here it is. Now, perception wise, you see, you know, woman in the shower. There you go. And there, that's what you see a window and it's a, you know, a shower fixture over there. There's blurred water and, and there you go. I'm going to challenge you to not look at the subject, not just her, not just the room, not just a boat, not just a mountain, not just someone's pet, not just architectural, not anything, but look at what the images, the elements of the image are doing. So if we zoom in, we'll see that there is, of course, you know, noise. There's a lot of noise from the higher ISO. Okay. There's blurry water. Okay. There's specular highlights on the skin back here. Her face is dark. There's all kinds of green discolorations and artifacts happening in here around the skin because that was brought up in raw. Okay. Shiny beads of water here, very specular along with other discoloration. Okay. And because of the shower scene being, you know, this teal sort of turquoise blocks of uh, tile or whatever, it reflected a lot of color. So there's all kinds of things going on. But before we think to ourselves, goodness, how do I address this? Let's break it down. First of all, the core ways you can break down an image should, in my opinion, be with its luminosity or luma, its chroma or colors and hues, okay, and then the frequencies, high to low. You've heard of frequency separation, I'm sure, but we're talking about the various frequencies. I want to show you how to, when we break it down, it kind of gives you a visual. For example, the first layer is my luma layer which I've created to show that this is the luminosity. Luminosity is not like brightness. Luminosity is the perceived brightness, if you will. It tries to match what those colors look like brightness-wise. So when you turn on Luma on and off, it feels basically the same because it's trying to emulate that, okay? So that's Luma, all right? Now, way on top here, and I'll explain in a minute, I have Chroma. What does Chroma data look like? Well, let's turn it on. We notice it's completely seamless because we have it on color blending mode, but let's look at it. Whoa, this is chroma data of this image, okay? There's no luma data in here at all. That's why we don't have any darks and lights or anything that, like that at all. We have mostly an even 50% of, of, of the luminosity, but we have saturation and hues reflecting the colors in the image. It's a good way to analyze the image or one of the many ways. But when you have that one on color blend mode because you've extracted chroma data, it blends perfectly on top of luma data. You can prove that by turning the, those on and off and you see they're identical. So that means we can already break down an image into its color and its lightness or its luminosity. That's potentially useful to us. How is it useful? Because when we modify chroma directly, we don't have to worry about anything else getting messed up. So if I were to be extra bold, I don't recommend this, but if I were to be extra bold, take a paintbrush and choose, I don't know, this skin tone and then paint it right in here, Okay, it's a little bit too strong, obviously, but we can actually try to make it work by taking down things like saturation and whatnot. And we can slowly just work on the chroma layer until we get rid of some of those green tones that we are concerned with. And I'm not saying that's right, that's too strong, but see, we addressed the chroma already by itself, neat. Okay, well, what are these other layers? Well, I have a blur here. It's a duplicate of the Luma layer, and it's been blurred, smart filter in this case, with median to currently a radius of six. I have the frequency separated high frequency on top from the radius of six created. When I turn that on, everything is seamless again. Look how we're building this. We have Luma, we have a blur, we have high frequency of a chroma, and the image is identical. 
because we are breaking it down into its constituent parts. Now I have control of, uh, excuse me, chroma. I have control of the luma if I really wanted to. Here again, this layer is stacked up and everything's fine. Now you might think, well, what are the other ones? Medium high, very high. Well, if I turn on medium high, which is a 12, turn off six, it doesn't match up until I match the blur below it, 12. And what that does is again, we're just trying to, we're pulling and, and pushing and pulling frequencies up and down. It's kind of what we're doing. So right now I just pushed more into the high frequency. If I go to a very high two and go to blur of two, now I'm pushing it down, pushing more frequency down. So that high one here is the very top sharpest frequencies of all. That's what those are mostly. We can prove that if we were to zoom in here to the water beads and turn off the blur, whoa, we get a sharpening effect, but it's only sharpening sort of the highest frequency. If I turn on the high, the six, ooh, it sharpens really strong. And if I turn on 12, it again, broader. See, now we have the streaks of water being sharpened. Whereas on two, we only have the beads of water mostly being sharpened. But when we match that with its respective blur underneath the smoothing operator, as they call it, then now we matched everything is seamless all the way up. Now, the next one, the HSB separation is just another way of envisioning. These are useful for processes, but also useful for you know, uh, visualizations. So let's turn those on for a moment. You notice nothing has changed again. However, now we're blocking everything below it, okay? Because this hue layer, I wanna show you this. This is the hue, similar to chroma, but what this is is strictly hue information. It is just the hue data on every pixel. There's a lot of noise in this one, but the hue information um, on every pixel. And then the saturation and brightness is maxed out. And that's why you see, this is a great way to see what are the hues doing? For example, if you were to turn that off, you know, did you realize that there was so much blue in her top or her, even her bottom here? No, there, there, you didn't realize that, but there is, which is really useful when you try to target those things for selections or other modifications, right? So that's the hue data. And there's different ways to go about making that. This is a more accurate saturation mask, okay? But when we wanna modify it, we wanna layer it on top of the hue like that, then it's a, good, it's a good idea or rather necessary to invert it. And then on top of that, we have brightness on top of that. And this is a brightness one. I wanna show you something interesting here because brightness versus luma, okay? Let me make this normal, okay? So brightness, luma, brightness, luma. Brightness, Luma. And what that means is it's trying to, Luma is trying to give you a more accurate depiction of what the, the you know, the brightness is actually doing. So this one looks Luma, normal, Luma, normal, Luma. It looks a little more accurate. Whereas brightness is more literal, just data. It's like, there you go. It's not a visual perceptual representation of what the brightness is doing. Okay, so I know this all might be a little bit confusing, but I'm trying to hopefully convey a little bit about what we can do when we break down images. Now we have all kinds of tools at MVP that let us break down chroma and luma and frequencies and everything else. We even have one for HSB like that over there and some others. If you have any questions, leave us a comment below, but it's a lot and there's no way one quick video is gonna cover it. But once you start seeing images as this, as frequencies, high, low, medium, et cetera, chroma versus luma, right? this really starts to come together. And then you start seeing what is the hue, what is the saturation doing, and all these other things. It'll start to make more sense to you and no image will be out of your grasp. You'll also be able to look at an image and go, hmm, I don't think that's gonna be possible based on what my vision is. I wanna modify something, but I'm pretty sure it won't be possible because I'm seeing certain things, right? So stop looking at an image for what it is and start seeing it in those multiple ways. Breaking it down the way I did on the layers here this is just a demo. You don't have to do this, but at the same time, doing a couple of them here and there, depending on what you're trying to accomplish, could be hugely useful. So you have to start learning a little bit about the technical way to view an image so then your artist can come out. Once you have the technical down in your head and you're really comfortable with it, the artist now has more tools available to them. The artist in your brain has more options and less fear and less intimidation about the technical aspect of editing. You don't need all these layers, don't worry about that. Sometimes you need those, we have tools for that. There's all kinds of ways all over the internet you can find how to do these things. But understanding that you can break down your image into its constituent parts, modify them each individually to get what you need done. For example, on the high frequencies, we can heal, getting rid of high frequencies without touching the low. We can skin smooth, there's so many things we can do. Just understand that your image is not literally what you're looking at. It can be taken apart and then modified precisely how you want.